Okay, got it. All right, so um, welcoming you all. I don't know how many of you have been on with me before. I'm Sarah Google. I'm Scott's mom. Um, I have done quite a few of these soul planning classes through uh, Helping Parents Heal, and I'm always grateful for Elizabeth for posting the, um, the, the uh, announcement. So uh, I live in Ohio. Christine is helping me. She has been helping me since the beginning. She lives just 15 minutes away from me, and this works out really well. She knows a whole lot more about all this technology than I do, So, and I'm so grateful for that. So as we move through all of this uh, tonight, and I will extend the time a little bit after nine o'clock too, just uh, to make sure that we can answer your questions and bring more clarity to this uh, this this statement of soul planning and what all that is and how hard this is sometimes to um, to understand and grasp, with, especially for all of us whose child has child or children have transitioned, but. I'm glad you're here, and hopefully tonight we'll just answer some more questions, open up more to you than you've known before, and please know the chat room is open, and if you have questions, to please type, the, type those in. I will take plenty of time for the, the questions as well. So, I am Scott's mom. Scott passed in 1994, uh, suddenly, so unexpectedly. And yet I did hear from him the, the day after his funeral, which was beyond my comprehension, because in 1994, there was very little going on as far as any kind of help for a parent or anything about signs or really anything that would help me move along. And, and yet uh, somehow I was finding help in all the ways that I needed to. But Scott was my first sign the day after his funeral that just really blew my mind that something like that could happen because I did not even know about science. I had never heard of that before. So I started a, in a kind of a slow process, not like many of you who are on here early in your grief process and being able to tap into all that Helping Parents Heal is, is offering, and which I'm so grateful for all of that, that uh, there's so much there and it, it opens you up to the possibilities of you know, this connection with your child but I want you to know, even without the signs, without those um, that communication that you may be yearning for, behind all of this is really the soul work that we're doing with our children. Our soul work, their soul work. That soul is that innermost part of us. Our body covers that up. Our soul comes from spirit. Our soul, our soul is all knowing. And so there, we are in that um, that place of what to us seems so. Um, just imaginary. And yet the more we become aware of all that, the soul, the capabilities of our soul, the capabilities of our child's soul, our children's souls, we become that much more aware of the possibilities of a really a long-term connection and relationship with our child. I still hear Scott, and it will be 29 years for me coming up on May 20th since he transitioned, which I never could have imagined. I didn't know if I, I would ever hear from him. I could never have known that this communication with him, with signs, you know, just hearing him, anything like that could even happen. So I'm kind of the, the one to tell you the possibilities are there. You're doing the work by being here tonight, by coming in and spending time with us and knowing that there's so much more to this journey than we ever knew before. I did want to kind of go through, and I have, I have um, some descriptions of what the soul actually is from an, an old time Oprah show. I listened to Oprah a lot in the '90s. She was one of my greatest teachers, bringing on a lot of us soul based information and uh, others who were more aware than she was and I was for sure. So I gathered up a lot of information from her. But I just want to read you some thoughts from some people that you've heard of that would be considered probably experts on how they see the soul. So Deepak Chopra would be one. And he wrote, the soul is the core of your being. It is eternal. It doesn't exist in space and time. It's a field of infinite possibilities, infinite creativity. It's your internal reference point from which you should always be in touch. So 
keep in mind always that the soul that I'm talking about is your soul, our souls, and our children's souls at all as well. We are always connected, even if our child passed in any way that they passed, their soul is whole and healthy in spirit. There's no doubt in my mind. So when we have a connection with them, a sign, if we have a dream, whatever, their soul is connecting with us. It, call it spiritual collaboration. And so when you can begin to see the bigger picture of not being so separate, but that our souls, this innermost part of us that exists always, is always going to be working from here and there and everywhere in ways that we never imagined. I thought Scott literally, when he died, which I thought he had, that he was gone forever. And that was the end of the story. So I've learned, as many of you are learning, that there is a, he, he literally did not die anymore. I don't believe that the die part, that he transitioned from his body into spirit. And he is as whole as he needs to be, as you can imagine, um, in spirit with God, spirit, all the children that are there, all that is there, that we've all come from. There is that lifting, that kind of launch pad that we all come to earth from into the body to become whoever we have come here to be, which is our plan, which I'll talk about more. So another, another definition would be, uh, this, this is an author, his name is Daniel Pink. The soul is, I think, our capacity to see that our lives are about something more than simply day to day, and that we're here for a purpose. It could be connected to religion or not, but that there is a purpose of your being here. And I think if you can keep that in mind, that everything that you know we're going through on this journey, this grief journey, is purposeful and meaningful. I'll talk about meaningful a lot probably tonight, but to keep in mind that when you know that what happened with our child was not just a split second or a, you know, if they were sick, that this was something that was, you know, to create as much pain as it possibly has. Yes, it has, but we are we are being forced now to see more from that initial knowing that our child transitioned is to grow from this. And our children are our teachers in so many ways. They bring us uh, the information through the ways that they can. They, they have us meet other people that they know will allow us to see more. It's so much soul to soul, and it is so purposeful. So that soul holds all that information. I'll, I'll give you another one, which I feel this is from Wayne Dyer. He says, the soul is the birthless, deathless, changes, changeless part of us. I'll say that again. The soul is the birthless, deathless, changeless part of us. It is that part that always exists. So your child's soul will always exist as well. It's a part of us that looks out from behind our eyes and has no form. The soul is infinite, so there is no inner out of it. It is everywhere. There's no place that our soul is not. So I hope that gives you an expansive view of this. And so when we, when we talk about our soul plan, that we planned with our child in spirit. And if you can visualize, um, and this is what I do with Scott, I visualize that he and I were in spirit before we both came into our bodies here, working together to plan what we would need in this lifetime. And that Scott came uh, through me, chose me to be his mom. I needed to be his mom. We needed to work together. All of you, you needed to be with this child or your children who have passed and your child who were still in the children who are still in the body. This is all so predetermined and also so meaningful. And so we, and we're having to be uh, in this situation that we're now in searching and seeking for answers. We came here to find these answers, to learn more about the bigger picture and who we are through a, an experience that we never thought we could survive. And yet on the majority, I would say, we survive. We begin to see more than we ever could have. And we're always linked to the soul of our child. And the more we can take that in, it feels like we're not so far apart from them. That distance is, is uh, shortened and, and brought into a place that we can um, know that they're within us. If we talk to them, they can hear us. If we are, I mean, I, I told a friend the other day that I could be driving down a road and I look out and I see a barn and there's cows and I'm looking at them and so I'm just wondering about the cows and 
suddenly I'll hear from Scott. It's like, yeah, they're cows, mom. You know, they're doing what they need to do right now. It's like, he sees what I see. He sees through me as well. That connection is that strong, spirit to spirit, soul to soul. And so I, I put that into you in a way to show you that there is such a depth to this relationship that we have with our children. And so when I talk about our soul plans, it is a plan that we, we bring together in spirit before we come here. And our children knew that uh, they wanted us to be their mom. They needed us to be their mom or their dad. And we, we uh, worked on that. We created a plan. And then each of us came into our body. Uh, our children then joined us as they were always meant to, for us to have this, this, uh, this life and this experience together. And I hope that that helps you uh, see that in all of this, that what we're doing, as you move through this grief, which is the hardest part, to see that this life exists and continues for both of us, us in the body and them in spirit, we are always going to be connected. So I was you know, when I think about my soul plan with Scott, I couldn't have imagined, but I, uh, you know, I was going through a box of things of his the other day, and I was re kind of re renewing my memories of all these years, because Scott would now be 48. He was passed, passed when he was 19. So it was nearly these 29 years, and I see who I've become in this time, and I have memories of him as a child. And I know that somehow in spirit, he's expanding as well. And with that expansion, then he can expand me and he can show me more. And so each of us as parents, each of us as siblings, we are here to expand and find out more of who we are than we ever thought. And I hope that some of you are already seeing that, seeing yourselves in ways that you couldn't have before uh, because we were living typically what we knew as a human life. We only knew that. And this defining moment in our life, in our lives, opened us up to something so big and broad. Confusing still at times, yes, but there are answers that can filter through. And you find that if you have a, a reading with a medium and there's something there that is so real, so um, memorable that you know your child is talking to you and connecting with you in a way that you never could have ever known before. There's proof now. We're hearing that. We're seeing that. We're feeling that through the mediums and through the through what our children bring us to prove that they still know where we are and what we're doing in our history. It's all so connected and so beautiful in ways that I never could have known. And yet we, we are being open to it. Um, I also want you to know, please put anything um, in the chat room that will, you know, um, you know, have any questions or answers that you have. But I also want to, I'll, I'm just going to go through, through, through some things to um, bring down or uh, just visualize this when we think of our children and the veil that is always separating us that now is being opened. So I, I would hope that some of you are feeling that as strongly as, as um, I was at the time that I was. We all always are opening up to these new terms. And so when we say that we're seeing beyond the veil, because we always thought there was this veil, this, 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 this cloud or whatever that kept us separated. And yet now we're seeing through the veil and we're able to, you know, communicate in ways that we were. So um, I know that one of the questions that I've had before about soul planning is like, so we planned this. Okay. We're following it. Supposedly you might say, I'm not seeing how I'm moving along on this journey. Uh, and yet you have an opportunity on helping parents heal for sure. And, and through books that you may read or whatever, to see that you're being enlightened in new ways and your, 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 uh, thinking is, is becoming broader. And so when we think, why would I plan this journey when I love my child, my children so much, why would I plan a journey like this to take me into such despair and such anguish and such anger and all the emotions that we may be feeling. Because when we plan this, we know that it's an important, important lifetime for both of us. We know that we will grow together. 
and that we will continue to be able to um, explore life in ways that we never have. This is a whole new era. I know that there were parents back in the, whose children died way back when, or in the 40s, 1940s, 1950s, 1960s, 1970s, who knew nothing about transitioning or soul planning or connecting with our children. But this is a time when we now as parents, we are being open to something so much broader. And it allows us to see the bigger picture. We're seeing through the veil. It's like a curtain that flies through the window and the breeze brings it back in and we're getting that information. And so to know that, you know, all of these experiences that we have, when you are able to begin to see purpose from it, meaningful, um, if you are able to feel the joy of getting a sign or a dream and know that this connection, it, ex it exists, you are then linking more into this bigger picture that we, um, I would define as soul planning. And so another part of this that I, I often say in this talk is that we're spiritual beings, all of us, and we're having spiritual experiences with our children. So the terminology that you use is often um, helpful to you to be able to expand and, and question and find that there's other parents that feel the same way. You're not the only one sitting in your house and uh, feeling this loneliness or this confusion about why would I have planned this when it's such a, conf it's, it's so painful. Why would we plan it? Because we know that we come every time we're in the body, this life is meant to be experienced. It's going to be showing us hard times. If you actually look at your life before your child passed and you look at the challenges that you have already had in life, whatever it was, was there family, were there family issues? Were there times when you thought you couldn't survive or you couldn't get through a class at school or your best friend suddenly moved on and left you behind? Or, you know, there's so many things when we look back on our childhood or our, um, in our families or just what life brings us even as children. If you look back on that and think, how did I get through those really challenging times when I was young? What have you already gone through in life that was maybe preparing you to be open-minded or to be able to see that you have a strength in you, a courage in you, that's your soul that is carrying you in ways that you never thought before. You know, I, I look back on, I mean, it could be your mother or your father passing and you not knowing how to live without them. You could have been a young child, but yet how do we grow up as adults? We've had experiences in our life that have been challenging. Those were already in our soul plan before our child passed. As children, everyone has a soul plan from the time they're born, even we know to the parents that they're born to. So as you start to look at this, in a way of who you are today and what you've already experienced in life. Yes, this is hard. This is the hardest thing that we'll ever go through. And yet you will have tools somehow coming through you, through your thinking, through your child, through others that you meet, through helping parents heal or other groups or through friends. We are expanding all the time. And so to be able to know that we are bigger and broader than what I thought was just mom, uh, knowing that I'm a spiritual being who had a child who passed, who's also in spirit, and that we're connecting, it expanded me in ways that I never could have imagined. So I know it's hard not to get discouraged. And yet, if you begin to see the positives and look at what you're learning already, that is your soul's work. We each came here with a separate soul plan. Our children came with their own separate soul plan. I only had one child, Scott was my only child. But if you have three or four children, you get to see each one of them so unique in their own way. Each of them working on their own lifetime, which is their soul plan, in ways that they're experiencing life, in ways that you know, you're just uh, working through it. And so to see the expansion of who we are and looking at ourselves as a soul in a, in a plan that goes beyond what we could have imagined, I hope that that um, begins to give you some visuals or to be able to understand that um, their lessons, yes, and their experiences, and you've already accomplished so much just even by being here, by being 
you know, getting through teenage years or getting through the challenges of, of life already. And you have tools that are going to come to you in more ways. You just listen and wait to see what does your soul bring you? What do you need? So let me stop there and see if we have any questions. Um, Christine, do you have, can you see? Yes. Um, so Tony is asking, thanks for inviting questions. Uh, when you say you heard Scott talking about the cows that you were looking at, did you hear his voice? Has the way that Scott comes through you changed since the beginning and wondering how to best tune in? Wow. Great questions. Uh, so when I was seeing the cows, and I have to say, anytime I've heard Scott, I it does not sound like I remember Scott's voice. And I, the, I did not hear Scott's voice actually for six years because remember it was in the nineties. We didn't know much. The veil wasn't quite as lifted as it is today. And so I heard the words build a children's memorial at my six years. And it was a voice that I, it was just like a thought went through my head. It wasn't a voice that I recognized. So I didn't think it was Scott. I thought if I was going to hear Scott, it would sound like him. Like, I think we would all think that. And yet I ignored it. I ignored it. And I've told this story often, but, um, just three weeks later, I heard the same voice in my head and it was just another voice, same voice. Build a children's memorial went through my head like a thought. And it was that moment that I thought, is that Scott talking to me? It does not sound like him. And yet there was something in me that time that clicked. The second time I heard those words, it clicked in, on, in me and it was like, is that Scott talking to me? I mean, I never dreamt of building a children's memorial. That was never in my thoughts ever. And yet the second time it came exactly the same way, it wasn't demanding. It was just a statement, build the children's memorial. It didn't frighten me. And I don't know about others, other parents that hear their children, if it sounds exactly like them, I kind of doubt it. But I have to realize that Scott is in another place and his communication has come, come through in ways that it wasn't ever before, you know, um, and so I, I, I trusted that that was Scott that told me to build the children's memorial. And in doing that, I built the children's memorial, uh, had a, a group of friends or other moms and dads, and we did this. And so let me just say the first part of that question was, no, it did not sound like Scott. And when I hear him talk to me now about the cows, let's say, all these years later, it still comes in like a thought. But it's, he calls me, he started calling me mama. He always called me mom or mommy. He started calling me mama. And I said, why are you calling me mama? Because you've never called me mama. That would be confusing. And he said, because we've had so many past lives together. We came in for this lifetime again to do all this work that we're going to do. And I'm going to call you mama because it's a longer word. So I took that as the, as the way that, you know, he needed me to understand it. And he has called me mama ever since, and it's just now very normal. And so let me uh, get the rest of that question. Um, Christine, can you uh, tell me? Yeah, of course. Um, okay. It just says, wondering how to best tune in. You know, I think all the tools that we have available now through Helping Parents Heal, and Paige does that uh, as well, is just, you know, everybody's going to have a separate journey because we're all unique and we all have separate, we have past lives that are different and unique from one another. I, what I learned was whatever resonates with me, I feel my soul is telling me to pursue that. It feels deeper, it resonates, it like goes to my heart, it makes sense to me. So I tried meditation early on. I had an excellent meditation teacher. I was in a class with other parents. Everybody was hearing their child. I was not. I was so frustrated. It was sad. I didn't know what to do. And so I moved on to something else. You know, I, I pursued other spiritual tools like we do. And I found that um, maybe I wasn't even hearing Scott all the time, but I was. he was showing me in different ways, you know, kind of where to go, what to head into. So I didn't have nearly as many classes or tools to tap into you. So I, and Tony, I have to tell you, basically I had to um, 
I had to just trust my journey that whatever came, it was meant to come. And in, in that, it also allowed me to not be so demanding of myself and feel like I was letting him down or was letting myself down. I started to just trust the journey in ways that whatever came to me, the signs, the dreams, the uh, seeing his name, seeing his birthday, those kinds of things. I took those in in ways of his communication with me. I don't know that everyone who's lost a child or whose child has transitioned is going to hear their child. I'm not sure that everyone has so planned that. And so if it's not been so planned way back when, whenever we did this, there's going to be another kind of way of communication. It may come through in, um, in through writing. It can be, you know, you, you've heard of automatic writing. And that's when you might go, I might write, dear Scott, you know, and I might say something like, it was a beautiful day. I missed you so much. I wasn't quite sure what I should do with all of this pain that I have. And then I would write my word, my writing, dear mom, like I was writing, it seemed like I was writing to myself, but I just gave it time and I worked with it. And I wrote down whatever was being, whatever was coming through my pen, whatever was coming through me, I wrote it down. And I did some of that. And honestly, I can tell you, sometimes I look back on it, on those words that I wrote to him and I see how much meaning it was. And that's what happens often with this. They plant the seed and then we begin to see it grow within us, their communication in that way. So with the automatic writing, that is another tool that I used. But honestly, I did not hear Scott for, after Build the Children's Memorial, um, I was still being happy to see me, somebody offering me brownies. And it's like, oh, that's a, that's a sign from Scott because he loved brownies. And so, you know, I was just going from sign to sign, which, you know, and then in time, I couldn't even give you a timetable on this his communication through me started to come out stronger. And if you've read any of our blogs on spiritteaches.org, we have like a hundred blogs online through spiritteaches.org. Scott came to me at that point, and now I was hearing him and said, we need to write blogs. And it's like, no, I can't. And he goes, I'm going to help you. It's like, but I don't want to. This is, this scares me. No, we need to. And so literally when I read things that Scott and I have written, especially in those death teachers and spirit teachers blogs on that site, I am amazed that that came through me and that I was, um, that was uh, my sole plan with Scott was to provide that information for you and others to be able to see how my journey traveled, how I traveled through my journey, how I was opened up and how this all evolved. So when I tell you my journey and how I, uh, this has all come to me. That's my personal soul's work and Scott's with me. You will find your own. You will discover. They, he, your children will come to you in the ways that they need to. If you know Mabel, she gets license plates and she has immense communication through license plates. If you've ever read her, her, um, her words. And it's just stunning how, how this happens. And you can do numerology and you can see how the numbers that you see periodically spell out letters. And uh, so that's another way of looking. So I would say, just delve into what Helping Parents Heal has to offer and try it. Paige, all, you know, she has these spiritual tools for healing where she offers so many different ways of you know, working through or connecting and tap into that. I'll tap into that. So I don't have any one way of doing this. There isn't one way because we're all very unique and different in, on this journey. Tony so, says, thank you. Thank you so much, I Sarah. Okay. Um, so it looks like Pamela says, I've had a hard time understanding why we would plan this horrific loss. And I think you touched a little bit on that. And uh, Sabina is, you know, kind of, coming in with uh, the same thought that uh, what bothers her is not that she agreed to a life of heartache to grow from it, but why would I agree to end my child's promising life, ending it before it began? So 
those are a little bit uh, in the same realm there. Right. Well, thank you both for asking that because it's a question that we all have. And, and when it comes to soul planning, it is one of those, this is the one piece that brought me greater understanding of this, I would think, because I felt exactly the same way when I first heard this, that I would never have planned this. This uh, love that I had for Scott was enormous, just like it is for you. And yet what I've learned is we will take one for the team. And I can imagine each of you that are here tonight that you would have taken one for the team, for your child to grow and thrive and learn in new ways and see a bigger picture of life and death in ways that um, we could never imagine. So I, what I, what I always, I use the terminology, taking one for the team that we will, you know, we've had many lifetimes with our children and we've, we've, you know, I might've died before Scott 13 times and he might've died before me 500 times. I don't know. I have no idea, but this is, it is a give and take back and forth. And yet we always know that when we plan it, there is great meaning and purpose in this. And so when I say that you know, we'll take one for the team. We did take one for the team in so many ways for our children. We're suffering greatly now, but they know that this expansion, this awareness that you're growing, this pain pushes you to see more than you ever thought you would see in this lifetime. And if you talk to other moms, even Christine, about how who they've become since this happened, from that devastation to this time of seeing ourselves in new ways, you can't imagine that this could happen to you, but you have to give it time. This is not a fast journey. It is one of step by step by step. And this love that we take one for the team, for our children, we would have done that for them. And this is what they have done for us. The best part about this is we know they are safe. We know that they are in a place of love. We know that they're surrounded by love and they have our love as well. And so to know that they're safe helped me a lot with Scott, to know that he would be taken care of in spirit, that I didn't know it originally. And yet to know that my expansion, which I didn't care about either, that what I would learn and grow, who I would become, irrelevant to me, I just wanted to find Scott. And yet on this process, in this process of seeing who I've become, I'm amazed at who I am and what I've done and who and the people that I've met. This is another part of the people that we meet and who we're inspired by. And there's so much to it that you will see in time, but you may not be able to right now. But I say, hang on to that knowing. So, Christine, let me ask you. Yes. I met you early on. Mm -hmm. And now how would you explain how you have changed and who you have become through this experience? I absolutely never thought I'd be doing anything like this, uh, especially public speaking, but uh, I have become very active in, you know, several organizations that um, help people. And that's really been my guiding light is to, you know, be following people that have reached out to me and have been a guiding light to me, such as such as you, Sarah. And um, I do have to say that, you know, the way that we met was absolutely no coincidence. And um, that really kind of set me on this path as well, is to know, to trust the journey and that Andrew is still with me. And I know that we met on, it was actually my first Mother's Day without Andrew, without all three of my children. Uh, but it was an incredible way to know that there was hope. And that's what it brought to me was hope. And that's what I give in turn to other people through which organizations I serve through. So it really has been um, an amazing journey. Uh, we are approaching our our ninth year uh, with uh, without Andrew's physical presence, but I do know that he is with me in this work. So thank you, Sarah. 
the, thank you. And Christine is the affiliate leader for Cleveland, Akron, Cleveland, Ohio, um, does an excellent job with that and uh, does a lot in the public uh, arena around us that um, is just so beautiful in, in honoring her Andrew. And when Christine talks about how we met, you know, the angel, the angel of hope is the children's memorial that I was told to build. That's where Christine and I met when she was sitting at the angel memorial one day and I drove up and it was just she and I at the angel and that started our friendship. So, you know, you start to connect the dots. So much of this journey is connecting the dots and not knowing how you could do that, but it comes to you. It's, it's put in front of you. And, and I've, I've said this before, but you, you can't see where you are sometimes. You almost have to look back and begin to see what you've accomplished and the people that you've met and who you're becoming to really see progress. It's a hard thing to go through. It's, I, I understand. But when you can trust in more, I say trust the journey all the time. It's one of those things that take the steps, you know, plus, you know, just go forward in the best ways that you can. Reach out to others that you can find help you know, that inspire you or help you and allow them to um, carry you as well. And the friendships that we gain through all of this, uh, when so many of us, I feel like on this journey, feel like we've lost friends, that people haven't understood us, even family doesn't understand us. So part of this journey, we're going to meet the people we're meant to meet on this journey through Helping Parents Heal, through other organizations, if you can find one good friend through all of this that you are able to uh, expand with and share and take down to your deepest heart, broken, you know, uh, experiences, they're here. They're here. You, they will find you or you will find them. And you start to value things that you might not have otherwise. It's, uh, it's something I know that something's so hard. And, you know, I, um, I also get asked a lot you know, about free will. Was this our choice, their choice? Um, I've learned through Scott that everything that comes into our lives that shows up was always meant to come. So is that free will that we would have said, I'll do this with you? Well, that would have been the soul planning part, yes, but in the body, free will, how your child died, it could look like that was their choice. Um, I hear a lot of mediums talk about choice. You have a choice for this, you have a choice for that. I believe in what I've been given by spirit, by Scott, is that any experience that you go through, any experience your child went through, that was always their soul's work, their soul plan. It would not have come into the, into the human part of you if it wasn't meant to be. And as Christine had reminded me to say, no coincidences, there are no coincidences. Things happen, horrible things. We watch life you know, move around us and it's very hard. But you start to look at the beautiful things that happen as well, the people that you meet, the peace that you can, um, you know, find some peace through music, through your child, and a song might be just filling you up and you know that they're communicating with you in that way. So you start to just, um, it's a whole new belief system in, in so many ways that you're starting at scratch. We start from scratch, all of us start from the, all the unknowns and we start facing the reality of this life. But when you know it's planned in a way that I've learned and Christine has learned and many others have as well, that this is a journey that is a lot of, of um, it's needed for you to see more of who you are, even when you don't care. And as you plug along day after day after day, you are seeing more of who you are. And there is something beautiful about seeing, um, seeing anyone rise up from the ashes, as you might say, and become um, connected in new ways to life. And that's what, that's what we're being pushed to do. We're all being pushed to do that in ways that we never asked you know, for. And so another, another part of all of this that I've been asked at times too is like, um, why would someone, you know, why would we choose it besides taking one for the team? But even in our body, if someone chooses to come in with a disability, they're going to have a completely, any, all of us are going to have a completely different life than we've ever had before in any previous lifetimes. And so if you come in with a disability or if you come in with uh, something that you don't think that you could overcome, 
we find that there's so much that we can uh, grow from. And we see that there is a human spirit within each of us that does not always give up easily, that keeps pushing along and say, I'll take another day, I'll go another day. I can do this, I'll do this for my child. That is your soul speaking to you, pushing you, reassuring you. When those inner thoughts come, they're gonna be there. And we are, um, we're finding out more about who we are through all of this. And the other part of this too, is that when we begin to see that what so much of us are doing, what Elizabeth and Irene are doing and any affiliate leader, um, anyone that's reaching out is that we start to see a need for us to connect with the greater good in ways that maybe we've never done before. We're going down different paths. We're going in new places that we've never visited before. And yet, if we can, with the compassion that we have now for others, because we feel this pain so deeply, when you have this, you know, this compassion and you know how hard life can be, it opens us up to wanting to help others. And we look into what we can do to, to do that, to help them and to make their, you know, let, allow them to feel cared for and cherished in ways that maybe they're not. So we connect with others in ways that we never could have. But, um, and I hope that maybe at some point you just kind of look, you write some things down about yourself and say, I mean, we don't like to do this about ourselves, do we? We don't like to say, oh, I'm doing this, I'm doing that. But if you say, you know, I helped a mom today. Now you have that one-on-one -on -one connection a friendship may be forming, or maybe you just said something that helped another parent through your own experience. That is so valuable. If you look at that as something that was meant to be purposeful, you couldn't have stopped those words from coming out to you. Maybe you just felt pushed to talk to someone else. Maybe you felt pushed to call someone else or just to reach out in a way that you never have before. You begin to see yourself in new ways because our hearts are bigger here. Our hearts are broken but they're healing and they're bigger, let me tell you. Uh, they expand, uh, our heart just expands in ways that I never, never could have imagined. And so when we are in this new place constantly, and yet you begin to see yourself and you, get, you begin to know that you're not the only one going through this. The soul work that we do as spiritual beings having spiritual experiences, not just a human experience, you start to look at everything as maybe spiritual, spiritually driven, spiritually provided in ways that you never um, thought before. If you're here tonight and you got into this, there were 100 people that signed up for this class. You 21 that I see now, you came, you're here. Why are you here? There is something in you that needed to hear or see someone else here or hear their words or hear a question that resonates with you that gives you a little bit more insight than an hour ago. And that you'll take away, write it down, remind yourself of it, and treasure any gift that you can get from any of these um, Zoom meetings that you come on. And we begin to just, uh, I think, uh, just find that love, love for ourselves that comes out of somewhere that says, I'm worthy of being here. I need to be here. I have other children. And I'm pushing myself every day to get through this. And yet your children are going to grow through this too. They so planned this with you, your, your, your existing children, your live children, just like your child and spirit is still so alive. And so becoming more. The sole plan is to push us. If you find, uh, why would we come? Why would we do this? You'll find out in time. You just have to be patient in some ways, but also trust the journey. And I remember when Scott first told me the words, trust the journey, it's like, I don't like this journey. He said, but if you trust it, just trust the journey, you'll see more. And that's what's helping me every day when sometimes I'm confused as well, because I still don't have all the answers. But by trusting the journey, it allows you to open up your mind and your heart and your soul is always at work to see more and to um, let go of some things that aren't helping you and to bring in the new. And that is your soul's work the entire time that you're here.
And when we're done, just like our children, believe it or not, Scott at 19, your child at whatever age, they were, they were done with what they had come here to do. Scott had so much potential. I could never imagine him not being here. I can imagine the same thing for each of your children. So much potential, they had so much, and whether it was drugs or suicide or however they needed to leave, they left as they were meant to go. So planned. I look at suicide, the drug, you know, everything going on with that, as that was the experience that was meant to be. And when they were complete, when they'd completed their lifetimes, they, they, it was time for them to leave, whether it looked like it was at their own, at their own that they did that, or through Scott, who died from strep throat, seizure disorder, dehydration, and elevation, all in his sleep. One night he was gone. And so, you know, I didn't know why, but now I know that each of our children that left, I trust this, I know this, they had completed everything they came here for. Even a three-month-old baby, the same thing can be. How could that be? They came and did they change their family's lives? Did they change the potential for who their sisters or brothers might become because that one baby left their family? Everyone has changed. Everyone will expand. Everybody will move in different directions and carry that three-month-old baby or my 19-month, my 19-year-old son or your 43-year-old child or children. It has meaning and purpose and it's all through love that pushes us to show us more. So, Christine, are there any more questions? I don't, I want to make sure we answer yeah. them. Uh, yes, just a couple more here. I just want to read a couple of comments. Uh, uh, Karen says, you know, whatever, whatever resonates, trust the journey. Yes. And Sabina had uh, echoed that with, as far as what you said, whatever resonates, and I know what resonates will change with time as I grow spiritually. So absolutely. Um, Pamela is... Um, Pamela says, but I don't feel like I've become a better person. I feel like the shell of my old self, more feel fearful, more anxious. And yes, I'm learning new things that I never knew existed, but maybe it's too early in my journey to understand. I think that's exactly it. It does take time. I think any of us that have been on this journey longer, we have felt that shell thing too. It feels empty depleted. It's like, where do I go from here? And so to be on a meeting like this, to, you know, keep on, keep on taking those steps when you can, loving yourself, giving your time, giving yourself time to have, um, you know, take walks in nature, you know, find something that you love to do that may not be connected a hundred percent to grief, but find something you love to do. And, you know, for me, it was nature. I, I like to walk. I mean, okay. But when I started going out and walking and I did it for a year, two, almost two years, every day I went walking and we live in Ohio. So we had like rain, snow, sleep, a little bit of sun, um, not as much as we'd like. I grew to love nature. And what I found in just walking was I found Scott out there too. He was there. There is no, no doubt in my mind. Was he through the cardinal that I was listening to? Was he the was he the deer that I passed that just stood and watched me and didn't run away and just looked at me like, hey, hi, I'm with you here standing. It was just so phenomenal. And to know that just by taking those walks, wherever I could go, nature, we have a lot of nature trails here. I was able to expand myself, find some peace of mind, and I have to actually tell you this amazing experience that I had. Scott and I were, and Christine is too with Andrew, but Scott, we would sign every card with XOs. I mean, some of them were covered with XOXO all over the place, but that was a sign for, for me from Scott was XOX, love and hu heart, hugs and loves and hugs. So I was out walking one day and the sun was bright. It was a summer day. The big sun was, was shining and I saw a jet had come down. And somehow two jets had crossed and there was an XO. So there was X and then there was the sun. And I looked at it, it was like, oh my gosh, that is a sign from Scott. He's with me again, you know? 
So when I got to my car so excitedly, and I, I couldn't even take a picture, it was so fast. I looked up and when I got to my car, not only was there the XO still there, another jet, two more jets had come and made an X after the sun. So now it was completely XOX. In the sky, I called my husband fast and I just said, look outside, go find the sun. You've got to see this. And he did. And so it was proof as well that someone else saw it. But I could never have known that something like that could happen. It's like a miracle. These signs are miracles. That something like that could come about just on my walk. And so open yourself to other ways of taking care of yourself. Find, I, I went to jazzercise. I worked like crazy, work, you know, working out that way. I grew to love it. I got a great group of friends. None of them had lost children, but they just listened to me anyway. It was lovely. And, and slowly another mom came in whose child had died. And then another one did, which was incredible. And so we had our own community growing there as well. So don't just stay home, try and find ways to get yourself out in something that you can love or just have a, another something to think about. You know, we need to have diversions and yet it may turn out to be one of the best things you could have ever done. Pamela did respond and say that uh, that's funny because she saw a medium and she told she told her that her Tyler said that she needed a hobby and to get outside and go do some gardening or take a trip. So absolutely. And then um, Ellie commented as well that she said that she feels the same way. She said, thank you for making the point that we have to take the journey one step at a time. Sometimes I think I should be doing more or have discovered a purpose, but I know that I have to just be where I am at this time. So oh, thank you, Ellie. Such yes, yeah, such wisdom in that. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I, I appreciate that too. And, and I have to tell you, I wasn't always really driven. The things that I've gotten into have like come into my life in, in so many ways that I couldn't have imagined. Um, you know, I went to meditation. I worked at that. Yeah, to no avail, as I told you. And yet um, other things that have come, I, I, I've just been so surprised and pleased with too. Um, just meeting someone else on, a, on this journey can open you up to other experiences as well. So I think we, if we can love ourselves, you know, just enough to say, I've got to give myself time. It's, it's a, it's an up and down journey. You know, there's, you go down in the valley and then you come back up and you can breathe again and then you fall back down in. That's so normal. It's so normal. And to know that you are doing exactly what you need to. And I will say on the soul's plan, all that, that you go through each day is written into that journey. That down day, maybe you just write, maybe you sit, maybe you just cry, but that was needed on that day. Don't beat yourself up for that. The next day, hopefully some of that may pass. Maybe you have a need to get out. Maybe you have to get out. Maybe you have to go to the grocery store. Maybe that's not always the easiest thing to see the Oreo cookies that your child loved. But you know what? So many of us have gone through that and, had, and found the cookies and endured it, but I would buy the cookies. <laughs> it's like, you know, I'm going to buy these because... I love them too. And I know this is something Scott wanted me to see. But every hard thing that you go through is not going to be there forever. You're going to become more acquainted with it. You may embrace it. You may just say, um, this is going to be a part of my life. I, I, I need to find a new normal. Well, I don't really love that word and those new words. That's what counselor told me. Sarah, you need to find a new normal. This was like at three years. And I said, nothing is ever going to be normal again. So in time, I changed that in my own wording to a new reality. Because the new reality allows for the new to come in, but it's not doesn't have to look like normal. It can turn into normal. But when people say to us, you have to find a new normal, I, I, I cringed at that as well. So I say it's a new it's a new reality that you will take step by step. You know yourself, who you've been, what your past lives are bringing in, what your future needs, the people that need to come into your life that will come into your life. 
people that drop out of your life that were intended to drop out of your life because that was also so planned. It's so much bigger. And maybe if we don't like some things, maybe we just say it was so planned. You know, I'm not going to like this. Um, it's so planned that I'm not, not to like it. But maybe just set it aside and say, okay, I'm going to deal with it that way. I'm just putting it over there. If that's not my soul plan and I don't like it, I'm just going to leave it there. And you may see in time, most, most likely, that somehow you make friends with that or you understand it better and you're able to take it in to say, you know, five years ago when I said this about that, I now understand it. I see it that I can embrace this terminology or this experience in different ways. So love yourself through, you know, year, day by day, hour by hour, and allow yourself to be vulnerable. We are vulnerable. That's beautiful to be vulnerable. Scott told me, he wrote a blog about being vulnerable. Now I'm proud to be vulnerable because it shows that I'm open-minded. I'm open to what can come that's going to hurt me. And yet I know that there's something in me that can um, work with that instead of feeling like I'm always going to go down in the hole. So if someone, if you feel vulnerable, accept that as a part of this thought, this journey, and your soul is reminding you maybe two days out of the week, how vulnerable you feel, allow that to be. You will not always be in that place. All right. Anything else? There, okay. Chris? You know, one comment that I want to go back to is uh, from Roxana. And she said, your, your blog was the first thing that actually gave me hope. I've read your soul's plan and understand, however, it's been a year and I still can't talk about my son without crying. How can I move past that? I'd say cry. I think, you know, all of us are. At 10 years for Scott, I wrote somebody and said, what do I do at 10 years? It's a decade that he's been gone, even though I knew he was around, but I didn't know what, I mean, is there something we're supposed to do? Do we just move on? Do we, what do I do at 10 years? I didn't get a good answer from anyone. And so I just moved on to 10 years in one day and 10 years in two days and three days and four days. And yet, um, you know, don't be embarrassed by the tears. They're going to come. They're going to pop up in ways you never could. You know, my third Thanksgiving. Oh my gosh, I was a mess going to my brother's house for Thanksgiving. Um, I found finally, Scott gave me this hint somehow to make homemade applesauce. And I would take that to Thanksgiving. And we started a new way of opening up our Thanksgiving meal with my families that I made homemade Thanksgiving or made a homemade applesauce. Scott was learning how, when he passed away in college, he was learning how to use his left hand because he was right-handed. He wanted to be ambidextrous. So I took that in. It's like, okay, we're going we're gonna to eat this applesauce that Scott loves with our left hands, first bite of the meal at Thanksgiving or Christmas or Easter. And I introduced Scott into our family in ways like that. They loved that. It was a way for us to remember Scott and to be able to honor him and for me not to feel so distant from him on those days. And so you, where did that thought come from? It had to be in my soul's work, you know, so I'm not, you know, just trust what you feel, try and find, you know, what can help you on any given day and you will find your way as well. You're here for a reason. Your life has purpose, whatever it is right now that you can't figure out, give it time and just take it day by day. You will see more, I'm sure. I love the comments. I can't see the chat on my new computer very well. So I appreciate Christine, you know, bringing those through. Um, does anybody else have a question or anything you'd like to ask? Because, and, and really, you can always write me at sarah at spiritteaches.org. I'm open to that. I, um, I'll share any wisdom, any thoughts that I have to be able to, uh, help you on your journey. Anyone else? Okay. All right. I don't, I don't have any others in the chat box at this time. Other than uh, Ellie's last comment was, thank you, Sarah and Christine. It's an honor to learn from both of you. Thank you, Ellie. 
Also, I have two more uh, recording, two or three recordings on helping parents heal on soul planning. If you want to go back and look at those, um, they're available at any time through Helping Parents Heal YouTube, just with Sarah Rubel and soul planning. So thank you for all coming tonight. Um, you know, you're if you're here, I know you're meant to be. Uh, I value that. I wish you well. You are loved. You know, Suzanne Giesman always says this, you are so loved. I know you are so loved. Even if you cannot feel it, it's out there. It's out there. And it will come more and more into your heart. Christine and I both learned that. And many others are as well. So, um, yeah, take your time. Love yourself. You're courageous souls for sure. So Good night, everyone. Thank you for coming tonight. Thank you for coming. Good night. Good night.